Hello friend, it's me Pat Sloan here on Saturday for my daily video and my topic for the day is another one which is going to keep you organized if you are doing this and our topic is called, where did I put it? Journal it on your, on your calendar. What's journal it? I had a great suggestion from one of our friends here who said why don't you put on there at least once a month for to remind us to update our quilt journals brilliant right because we forget or we get going and then all of a sudden it's three months later and we haven't updated anything so if you're doing the quilting one or if you're doing your cross stitch uh today go in here and update like a status give a status like how far along are you in the project uh you know, the ones you've worked on. <laughs> so I think that that is a fabulous, um, a fabulous way to start your day is to do an update today for the month of where you're at. Um, it doesn't matter when you update it. I mean, you could update it weekly. You could update it once a month. It depends on how much quilting you're doing, whether you can remember it all. Like if you're doing a lot of stuff, you might need to do it every week or every couple of days even <laughs> so that you don't forget something. Okay, so I have decided that for once, because I rarely get to do this, I am going to make some mock-up blocks. I'm gonna make some sample blocks for the jelly roll things because, um, where did I put the jelly rolls? Uh, because anyways, I rarely get to do this and I wanted to see what, here's the jelly roll, my Morrison Park. I wanted to see what this looked like with the blue fabric so what then i decided on something else i'm going to show you that i just love and that's probably what i'm going to do because i just love it all right so i decided to do this one uh which is called ripples jelly roll ripples and i i'm going to show you two blocks now i use scraps uh i did not use my regular jelly roll so if you're doing a mock-up and you only have a jelly roll you don't have any of that fabric you could just lay the strips on top like of the fabric here let me show you oops 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 of course did i bring this all over here no okay i have to put this down here all right so if you wanted to do a mock-up and you only had the jelly roll so this is the jelly roll fabric then what you would do is just lay it out just lay out the things on top of whatever fabric you have as the background Here's the scrap. So you could do like this. You know, do, do that kind of a thing. And then you can see it without actually sewing the block. Um, because if all you have is the jelly roll, you can't afford. I mean, this one only takes um, 35 of the jelly roll. So you actually have a few strips that are left. So you could use something for a mock up uh, like that. All right. So let's see. Drum roll. Drum roll. I can't make drum roll noises. But there we go. This is a really cool block. Ta-da! I kept thinking of it as a log cabin block, but it is not a log cabin block at all. Uh, the beginning of it starts, this, uh, the navy, then the first round and the next round, and then it's basically framed out in the background and in the, in the print fabric and adding this cornerstone here. Then you'll see on the pattern, on the back, that you sort of twist and turn everything uh, the blocks. So you turn them so they, they alternate around. Now the entire quilt won't be red, of course. It'll be all the, all the different fabrics. So that'll make it even more different than this. But this gives me an idea of how intense this blue is. Um, it's a, I really like it. I really, really like this. And this would be a really good option. But, <laughs> but I came up with a better one. I did. I did. I am so excited. So I thought, what if I use my stripe from Morrison Park? Ah, the blue stripe. Oh my gosh. So it is not uh, as intense a blue. I also think it would look great. The stripe would look great. I, I am going to mock up this weekend the other block. I want to still want to see one of these made up with the blue and then I'll do it with the stripe because I just want to see how that looks. And of course I have extra fabric so I can do the mock-ups. Um, this stripe just, ah, it just makes, it's like, ah, 
I just love it. So that means I won't use the stripe in here. You know, I don't need all of these strips. And because this is very light, I'll have to decide, like I might not use the cream in here. And then maybe I might not use, you know, one of the other lights. You know, I had to pull out a few because they won't all get used. Or I'm gonna at least make one of them in a light, like maybe in the, um, like one of the, like the paisleys or something, which is sort of like in the middle because there's so much color with the light background, just to see how it looks. Because then you get a pop of these few light blocks. And when you do that, based on the layout, you wanna have more than one. Because if you just had one all light block, your eye is just gonna go into it. So if I do the light blocks, I need to have three, five, seven, and probably for the size of the quilt, it'll probably be like at least seven, nine, odd numbers, three, five, seven, nine. If you use odd numbers, your, your uh, eye feels that's more balanced in anything. It's just the way our brains work. Okay, so this is what it is. Like, so excited. I really love that. That is speaking to me in spades. Just like, yes, it's good. Like the flashing lights of Las Vegas are going. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know it, right? And that's something like I could do these digital. I could draft it digital. I could drop fabric in it, but it would not take me, it doesn't take me that much longer to cut and sew it. And it is immensely more satisfying to see it in fabric and feel it and put it together and go through the motion and then I get to see it in real color and not in my little screen you know so that is super exciting the other thing I wanted to show you uh, was that the charm the um, the charm pack table runner I have some thoughts on that for you who are going to be crazy people making that with me. So let me, once again, I left everything on the other side of the table. And so let me see if I can reach it. Ah. So this is the Santa Claus Lane uh, charm pack. And I did not get very far, but I am going to use pink. I decided I'm going to use pink because um, one of my friends said, well, if you're going to keep it forever, maybe you want to do a light background, but maybe if you're just doing it for fun, you know, like just for this season, do the pink. And I thought about that. I thought, you know, that's so true because there are so many cute Christmas fabrics. These table runners are so fast to do the zigzag table runner that, um, <clears throat> I could just do one every year for, you know, whatever sort of main quilt I might be wanting to feature in my living room. So there, and then I could keep the pink one or I could give it away someday. You know, it's just not, it's not like an heirloom thing, you know, the table runner. Uh, they're quick, fast, fun. So I am sewing, okay. So you're sewing two squares when you're doing the table runner. I'm doing the pink, and here's the Santa Claus Lane. So what, first of all, what I wanna show you is how to audition so that you get the most out of the fabrics where there is something to get the most. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Um, and I'm gonna pull you in here. All right, so for Santa Claus, so here is a fabric where, here, let me just flip these over. Like these, these two fabrics, don't really this one here really doesn't matter if i if i make a half square triangle this way or if i make a half square triangle the other way uh you're, you're still seeing sort of the same amount of print you know but if i am doing santa and this is the way i would do it it would be right sides together when i'm sewing them i want to audition by pulling this back Okay, so I pull one quarter back and I was like, oh, well, I get a great, I get a nice Santa in here. My quarter inch is not even gonna chop off any of Santa. Because when you're doing a charm pack, you don't, oh, you don't have a, a, any variety. I mean, you get what's cut in the charm pack, you, you know, so you might not even get a full Santa in something. It's just the way it works. But let's say if I did this. Okay, so that was, that was folding it back on this this direction right towards me now let's do this sideways direction if I were to sew the seam there this one I would get partially a Santa face and there's Mrs. Claus we don't get much of her on this square uh, and this way if I did this another one where I get just you know I would get Santa down this corner so really on this direction where I'm going towards me and even on the other side I get, I still get a pretty good Santa down there. So this is the direction I wanna go. So you might wanna put a pin there so that you remember 
that you're going that direction. So I have put a unicorn pin because you know you all need unicorn pins if you don't have those yet. And this will be where I'm sewing two two strip straight lines and down the middle. And I have one I'm going to trim for you because I trim like this all the time and I show it on my blog all the time, but I thought you might want to see. I've got my little Ulfa my little Ulfa mat. So I'll turn it over so you can see it a little bit better. Now this is one of them that's been sewn together, but uh, not trimmed yet. So if I just, this was just the two squares uh, and I cut down the center, but now I have to trim it because it will not be the right size. So I'm using the Quilt in the Day ruler and there, whoops, there you go. The Quilt in the Day ruler and you have half marks where there they are. The half marks are up on this side and the full numbers on the bottom. I need a four and a half. Do you see the four and a half? That's what I need. So down here, let's see how much closer can we get. I've got, uh, I've got lots of stuff I bring over. I was going to say lots of crap, but you know, it's good stuff. It's not crap. All right. So here is my four and a half line. I have to do this upside down. Let me see. Now that I've done, now that I'm facing there, I can do it this way. We'll try. So you can see the four and a half is on the seam. So here's the seam. Your four and a half wants to be on, has to be on the seam or you're not going to cut the block right. And then you hold it, take your rotary cutter and trim one side. And then you can just rotate around and I slid off of there because I'm doing this upside down and then I'm doing the other side. So now I have, when this opens, it will be a four and a half inch square. Now I do have, I will press it towards the dark uh, just because. And then the, you have these little dog ears, they're called dog ears, these little things, and they can get stuck in your machine when you're sewing these things. So I trim them off. You can either trim them off with your rotary cutter after you press, I normally do it after you press, but I'm just gonna show you now. So I would trim them off so they're flat. Now, if I'm using a die cut machine, it cuts them with that uh, little end off. And there are, some of you will pipe in, I know that there are rulers out there that you can trim those off as you're cutting your units, uh, which are other options. But I'm not cutting the squares here. I'm using squares out of the charm pack. So they're not, um, you know, I'm not cutting them down from something else. I'm using straight out of the charm pack. Okay, so. A fun day of thinking about projects. I hope you're going to sew the jelly roll with me. Maybe you'll do a mock-up. You can download the pattern and see. Um, if you want to do it like mine, you can get the Morrison Park and the stripe, the blue stripe. I'll link it down below. So today, update your journals. Take pictures. That would be another way of journaling if you're just, only, just taking pictures of your quilts. Uh, write a label for a quilt that maybe you were like always been meaning to write a label for. Do something to document your quilts today and your cross stitch if you're doing your cross stitch. All right, my friend. <laughs> I love you. Have a great day and I'll see you Monday night. Mwah.